Now, before we begin, I'd just like to offer a very, very big and heartfelt thank you to all the lovely people at Reddit who have been spreading the good gospel of Head Squeeze far and wide. We salute you. Or I do. Could we build a lift to take us into space? Space is, of course, the final frontier. Or is it? Could we not perhaps think of it as something like the 4,000th floor instead? Because the thing is, rockets, for all their fire and their fury and their ability to deliver Bond villains to the moon, are actually a bit silly. Using fuel to blast themselves and their payloads through the Earth's atmosphere and into space is spectacularly inefficient. At launch, about 90% of a rocket's weight is the fuel it will use to power itself, and most of that is used up in the first few minutes. The upshot of that is that carrying just one kilogram far enough into space to achieve geostationary orbit costs at least $25,000. Or to put that another way, it costs around $12,000 to take one bag of sugar up to the International Space Station to sweeten the cosmonaut's tea. The sheer cost of getting people and things into space has always limited the amount of stuff we send up there. But maybe there is a better, admittedly slower, but much cheaper way. The space elevator. I know it sounds daft, but the physics all work, at least at a theoretical level. People have been thinking about making buildings tall enough to reach space for a very long time. The earliest documented one is the Tower of Babel, which according to the Old Testament, God destroyed in a fit of rage because it threatened to reach heaven. By the late 19th century, a Russian named Konstantin Tsiolkovsky proposed a freestanding tower tall enough to reach the point of geostationary orbit. That's 35,790 kilometers. To go into space, all you'd have to do is climb this. Admittedly, your thighs would ache a bit by the top, but then simply put on your spacesuit and your space helmet and step out into the void. There was one obvious problem. At the time Tsiolkovsky was writing, the tallest building in the world was the 300 meter high Eiffel Tower. Move forward 120 years, it's now the 829 meter Burj Khalifa in Dubai. And that's quite an improvement, but it's still 35,789 and an eighth kilometers short on the mark. Buildings are self-supporting structures, so every bit of their weight rests on the base. As a building gets taller, it obviously gets heavier, the base has to get bigger. And even the most optimistic skyscraper designers think we will never actually build taller than about two kilometers. So we're never going to build up into space, but maybe instead we could lower a rope down. Now the idea is compellingly simple. If you took a long enough piece of rope, put it into space, but tied the bottom end to the ground, then we should find that the centrifugal effect of the Earth's rotation is cancelled out by the effect of gravity on the rope itself. This would need to be a very long piece of rope. It would have to go beyond the point of geostationary orbit, 35,790 kilometers, remember, and into deep space, where it would be attached to a giant counterweight. Now, the effect would be that the centrifugal force of the Earth's rotation would act on the counterweight, throwing it outwards, but gravity would pull it the other way, downwards, back towards the Earth. And if we get this right, then those two should cancel each other out and the rope should just hang in space. Getting things up or down, it would then be the job of crawlers, a sort of powered platform carrying people or cargo that would run up and down the rope from top to bottom. Theoretically, this should reduce the price of taking a kilogram into space to just $100, a bargain. Nearly as much of a bargain as subscribing to Head Squeeze, which is free. Just click on the television. And thank you to those who have already done so. It has to be said, there are one or two very tiny problems with making this work. The first obvious one is that no material exists 
with the tensile strength to cope with the loads. Because this piece of space rope may appear to be just hanging in the air, but in fact it's having to deal with two massive competing forces, centrifugal one going upwards and gravity going downwards. And this rope, or whatever it is, will have to be at its thickest at the point of geostationary orbit. That's where the load is at its greatest. But it can taper a bit towards the two ends. The biggest issue is, in fact, the lack of a material strong enough to make our space rope. Lightweight alloys and special metals can be spun into fibres, but they will only support about 30 kilometres of their own weight. Things like Kevlar uh, perform much better. They can support up to 400 kilometres of their own weight, but that's still nothing like enough. To create a rope strong enough and light enough, we're probably going to have to use vast carbon nanotubes, or graphene ribbons. Then there is the need to create the counterweight. Now one view, and admittedly this is from the wackier end of the science spectrum, is that we hook our space cable onto a passing meteorite and use that as a sort of space anchor. Alternatively, we will have to take the material for the counterweight up there ourselves. It's going to be about 5,000 tonnes of stuff, and that obviously is going to require this is where we're back to our original problem, lots of rockets. Then there is the risk of collision. As we've said, our space cable will be very, very strong, but it may not necessarily cope with an errant jetliner flying into it, or even colliding with a lot of the space debris that's already up there. And if the cable snaps, the counterweight will fly off into eternity, and we'll have to start again. On the plus side, the same basic physics mean we could build a much longer space elevator, way beyond the point of geostationary orbit, and actually launch spacecraft and satellites. In fact, if we built a space elevator 53,100 kilometers long, then anything that we sent to the end of it would be at escape velocity. Space elevators would actually work much better on other planets. Mars, for example, has only 38% the gravitational pull of Earth, which means the space elevator could be much shorter and made from conventional materials. And that only leaves us with the slight problem of getting there in the first place, which we'll have to do with rockets.